Hi, everyone. This is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting live from warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny, sometimes Colorado. Today is August 24th, 2021, and I wanted to make a brief update about uh, progress towards the 12th. Everything is on schedule. Things are looking good. Uh, we're just getting ready to cut the release candidate, and uh, it looks like next week we should be toying around with hard forking the test net. Uh, just to verify everything is looking good, working well. Exchanges are starting to migrate and come online, which is good. Uh, like homework, some students turn it in early uh, and some students turn it in uh, on time and some are a little late. That's what you always expect when you have more than 100 people doing something. Uh, but that all looks good. Uh, so everything is uh, on schedule still. We're going to have the Cardano 360 episode Thursday this week. I believe that's the 27th. Let me check. Uh, 26, excuse me. Yeah, uh, we're going to have the uh, 360 episode, the 26th. Uh, ADA listing in Japan on the 25th, so that should be tomorrow. We'll see what happens there. That's exciting, and hopefully uh, more will come, like Bitflyer and the others, uh, given it's a very popular asset in that area. Uh, and um, all the teams are are working real hard on the ecosystem. We just got some great benchmark numbers in, and uh, we're working on refining that and tuning a few things for the cost model. Uh, we also are making sure that all the launch partners, the eight different companies that are creating applications, uh, that they're all ready to go for the new PAB that's slated for delivery September 10th, and that the projects that they're working on are properly ported over and so forth so that they can demo uh, these things at the conference. We have a full team working on Dejed. jean Frederic is leading it. I believe Metalamp is the vendor that's working with him. Uh, so hopefully we'll have some good news there uh, pretty soon as well. A lot of work on documentation, a lot of work on challenge problems, uh, a lot of work on tutorials and these things. It looks like we're probably going to have to do another iteration of the Plutus Pioneers program. So we already did iteration one and iteration two, uh, iteration three after the new PAB comes out. And actually we can run that entire tutorial deploying things to the test net. So uh, that's a more representative sample of the developer experience. So thank you all of those who participated uh, in those uh, things. Uh, we're still in uh, uh, conference mode right now. We're working our asses off to get everything ready for the summit. It's going to be a good event. I think over 20,000 plus people have registered. Our hope is to get that to about 50,000. We expect to see a big boost in the month of September, especially after the launch of uh, Alonzo. Uh, and uh, all things are... Definitely moving in the right direction. Um, we're trying to uh, clean up and finish off some things with some overdue stuff. Uh, last year, you guys may have remembered that we did an audit with QuantStamp uh, for the code, and they found a few things here and there. Uh, we remediated and fixed all those things, but it took quite a bit of time uh, because there, the way that the code was being developed in our delivery schedule to completely remediate it. And by the time we had finished the remediations, the audit team that QuantStamp had was no longer available. They told us uh, that that team would not be available until August of this year. Uh, we said, sure, okay. We called and asked for them to uh, finish the verification that the audit uh, has been cleared. And they told us that we'd need a new engagement. And that would be a six-figure engagement to do that because of the time between the first audit and the second audit, uh, which we felt was not fair given that we'd already paid for the original scope of work and the remediation was in that scope of work. So what we're going to do is probably use another vendor. We're looking at Kadelsky at the moment to finish off the verification that we corrected the issues in the original audit report and release those two as a package. And we're working with the foundation right now to, uh, to see that through. Uh, so that's, uh, I promised you guys a few months ago on an AMA that I'd look into why the quant stamp report didn't come out. And it just is the nature of this game and the volume of work auditors have. And there's a cost benefit for these relationships. And um, it is what it is. Uh, that said, you know, we did the work. We feel we've remediated those concerns that were brought up last year. Uh, and uh, we just need that signed off. So I think we can get a secondary auditor like Kadelsky to come in and, uh, and figure that out. And we're right now in discussions with them. And if not, then we'll look at others. Uh, there's um, a few other QA things here and there that we're doing to uh, clean some stuff up. And we should have an update for you guys probably in a month or two about Mastering Cardano. I'm going to see if I can get Jim Caldwell, who is the author of Mastering Cardano, to um, to present on it and discuss the things learned and where he's going and publication dates. 
uh, at the uh, at the Cardano Summit at uh, September 25th, 26. Uh, so look for that and look for more documentation updates and more tutorials and things of that nature. Uh, now, remember that the launch of smart contracts with Alonzo is just the island. Uh, there's still the pond and the ocean strategy. Uh, these have not been forgotten. In fact, there, there's a heavy development going on with both us and competing partners to bring in EVM compatibility with Cardano and Yella into Cardano. And uh, we're going to be aggressively working on that after we clear the summit. And we should have some good news to report um, about where, when, and how uh, these things are brought into the ecosystem. We have a team working actively on Mithril as well. Uh, that's a very exciting paper because it's our light client. And we'll have a lot to say about Mithril and Hydra at the summit as well. So please do come to the summit if you're curious about these things and when we think they're hitting, what they're going to do for Cardano and the ecosystem as a whole. Uh, and I think people will be very happy. Now, one thing I'm not happy about uh, has always been the performance of Daedalus, especially on Windows machines. And there's a variety of reasons why it behaves the way it behaves. And there are going to be opportunities in the next three to six months for dramatic improvements in tuning and performance to help resolve the sync times, the connecting to network issues, and a litany of other concerns that have always plagued Daedalus. The problem is a full node is a very heavy piece of software. And there are a lot of paths we can take to make it a lot lighter and potentially preserve its utility and security model for the ecosystem. This is going to be an enormous priority of the remainder of the year and all of Q1 of 2022. Uh, it's unfinished business. I'm not happy about it. I've never been happy about it, but we've had to make compromises to ensure that we could deliver a lot of features and functionality on time. But it's unfinished business and it's something that's gonna be taken care of uh, in, uh, in due course. And that team is certainly working hard and they've delivered a lot of remarkable things and they're a good team. It's just, there's only so much that can be done with the way the software is and the progress of the software. And they've always been in a position where we focused on correctness and features over performance. Uh, but now we're starting to transition from features uh, to performance because correctness is done and we have um, the feature set we think is getting closer to the feature set that we originally had in scope for Cardano 2020 uh, development. So a lot of moving pieces, a lot of things are happening. Uh, we continue to get enormous amounts of feedback. There continues to be a lot of questions that have come up. Um, there's a lot of developer misconceptions. The other day, for example, in, uh, in a WhatsApp group that I belong to, I had some developers say, you can't do access control with UTXL. You can, and it's actually quite easy. You use an NFT to do it. Um, and there's several other design patterns that are for this, but it's very clear that this is an alien model to a lot of Ethereum developers. So one of the big areas of focus will be constant communication with the Plutus pioneers and the dApp developers who are creating the first wave of dApps on Cardano. It's very important that we go beyond just functionality. We go and emphasize heavily pedagogy and tutorials. The reason being is that uh, those will become the foundations for the next wave of developers uh, who aren't so adventurous and ambitious to make sure that they can come in and get these things done. The other side of it is the certification ecosystem. There's going to be a beautiful story about the certification levels and how to certify and audit uh, Cardano software uh, that's written in Plutus. And we think that we can leverage over 30 years of history in the functional programming and Haskell space in particular to create wonderful applications. But these are new tools, techniques, and ideas uh, and there are going to be great partners that can provide certification audit services to developers who are in our ecosystem. And it's one of the things that makes the island unique. Super important, though, that that gets done in, uh, in a structured way. So these are the busiest 45 days, I think, of the last 90 days. Uh, but I think we're going to land the plane very well and people are going to be very happy with it. And I uh, just wanted to let everybody know we are on schedule. Things are looking good. Uh, you know, there's a lot of excitement, passion, and enthusiasm. Unfortunately, we still continue to see an enormous amount of scams and uh, other problems. And actually, I'd like to make a call out to those in our community who are in law enforcement in some capacity. Catalyst exists as a general fund for the community to use the things that are necessary and beneficial to the growth and stability of Cardano. It's not just about 
marketing and adoption and commercialization and use and utility and development. It's also about protection. And that can include audit of key software that can include human protection. So in particular, uh, one of the things that we've always been keen to somehow figure out how to get established uh, is uh, some group of people who sit down and think a lot about things we can do to educate, mitigate, and assist uh, in, in law enforcement in the destruction of scams, the undoing of scams, educate the community, and mitigate the impact of scams, almost like a scam squad in the space or at the very least produce a corpus of evidence that can be used for litigation uh, in the event that certain companies are negligent. In my view, YouTube is highly negligent because of the giveaway scams that we continue to see. So those of you who are in law enforcement and you're finally looking for something to do in Cardano, highly encourage you to start talking to each other, form some groups, and really have a, a real dialogue and go to Catalyst uh, and request some funds for Fund 6 or Fund 7 specifically to start something to help the community in this respect. It can be the development of bespoke software. It can be the development of educational materials. It could be things that can educate and help law enforcement conduct investigations. It can be all kinds of things that in your view as law enforcement experts could uh, somehow assist, mitigate, or prevent uh, scams from occurring inside the ecosystem. If you guys are willing to do that, we can commit and uh, resources in two ways. Several of the people that are on my security detail are, are former law enforcement. I can certainly commit their, their time to assist in whatever group is formed. Uh, we also have cybersecurity experts at our firm, and we can certainly commit some of their time there. And we also can commit money. Uh, so if you guys do something on Catalyst and it gets approved, I will give matching funds to that up to a million dollars, depending upon how much you ask for. Uh, to ensure that there's something there. I'm also going to reach out to the Cardano Foundation. Uh, they're getting ready to start actually making a commitment for a budget, and hopefully they can announce their budget at the Cardano Summit at the end of September. Uh, whatever we match, we'd love to see the foundation match as well, specifically to address scams. And our hope is whatever group is formed, that this can end up becoming a cross-blockchain effort and a global effort. So not just scams, in the United States, but scams globally, and also scams in Ripple and Ethereum and EOS and all the other ecosystems that have been impacted. Every time one of the things occurs, there's a human being at the end of the uh, rainbow, and that human being uh, is hurt. They lose money, they lose faith and confidence, and they end up developing a very negative view of not just Cardano, uh, but of the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem and would support measures that are perhaps not in the best interest of the growth of the ecosystem. And if we're unable to regulate ourselves, this opens an opportunity for others to come in and do that. And they're probably not going to do it in a way that's conducive to innovation and growth. So it's a super important thing that we as an industry solve this. And we have plenty of people who are in law enforcement, who are holders of ADA, who are committed to the ecosystem and love this. I think you guys can get this done one way or the other, and we're here to support. It's not my area of expertise, and there's only so much we can do as a software developer. For example, we have had some discussions about potentially a beginner mode in our wallet software at some point that includes warnings and other special things to inform people that certain things are not real. It's pretty onerous to do this and translate this, but that's the level we're at because of the damage that continues to be done. Uh, and Unfortunately, if you trust people to be their own bank and be in control of their own money, you're also accepting the reality that some of those people will not be so wise with you, no matter how much you warn them or inform them or what end user license agreement they sign and so forth. That's just the nature of humans. We, you let people drive, some people drive drunk. Whatever freedom you give a person, there's going to be some small group of people who can't really handle that responsibly for, for whatever reason. And unfortunately, that's the nature of cryptocurrencies. You have tremendous freedom, but also responsibility with that. We as an ecosystem can do better to create tools and mitigations and education and try very hard to increase the level of cost of conducting a scam and the likeliness of being caught, which reduces the set of people who are willing to do that. But we can never get that number to zero. You can never 
stop the evils of human nature. It's always going to happen if there's an opportunity. Um, big progress on the NFT side continue to go away. I've gotten more than 100 emails about this lobster, uh, so I'll forward all of them to my assistant, and we'll begin the process of going through all of you who have sent me an email under lobster art. Appreciate that, and we'll start working on that graphic novel. It's going to be a lot of fun there, uh, and hopefully we'll have a, some form of output uh, available by the summit. That'd be a lot of fun, uh, and then, of course, we'll continue working on that throughout the year, and uh, once we have a full backstory, we can NFT the lobster, and it'll be a real fun thing to do. A uh, lot more to say, uh, but I'll leave it for the Cardano 360 episode at the end of the month. That'll be Thursday, the 26th. Nigel will be there. The rest of the gang will be there. They'll give you guys a lot of clarity about what's going on. We won't have a 360 episode at the end of September because that's the summit. It's going to be 360 on steroids in that respect. Huge, huge event. A lot of people going, a lot of great presentations being prepared. A lot of research being done. I, I think people are going to be very happy about uh, this ecosystem. You know, um, it's really an amazing thing. Uh, as it all comes together, even though there's a huge amount of work to integrate and pull it together, the basic ideas that we came up with in 2015 continue to remain relevant. Uh, and uh, there's a great, beautiful upgrade path with the Hardware Combinator to allow us to continually upgrade things. We're going to do... I believe three hard fork combinator events this year. Uh, it looks like we'll do one more uh, at the, before the end of the year. We call that Babbage, and that's probably where Genesis and peer to peer and other things will uh, work, weasel their way in uh, alongside some optimizations and improvements to Plutus after you've had a chance to play around with it with the partners for a few months. Uh, but those all went off without a hitch. And uh, next year, there'll probably be just as many and uh, increasingly larger amount of community control every step of the way. Uh, and so it's, um, it's pretty remarkable to see that. And it's also remarkable to see a direct line of sight to the island, the ocean, the pond strategy that we have. And so all these naysayers who say, well, no one will ever migrate because they can't learn X, Y, and Z will say, well, <laughs> just <laughs> use your same code. It'll run just better, faster, and cheaper. Uh, so that's great. That really is. And um, it's fun to see uh, how you guys, the community, continue to grow and innovate and prosper. So thank you for that. And hopefully, as Catalyst continues to grow, the foundation continues to wake up, uh, there's really going to be a tsunami wave of community initiatives. Uh, and I can't wait to see what we achieve over the next six months together. So I'll keep doing the updates uh, where and when they seem necessary. Uh, a lot more to do. I'll have some more to say probably next week, especially after we have a mission accomplished. September 12th is going to be the Hartford Combinator event. It is a Sunday. Why did we pick Sunday? Because that's just the day that the epic boundary falls upon. There will be a watch party uh, available. Uh, we'll have Tim announce that date and time. Uh, it'll be around the epic boundary rollover. Uh, and uh, I'll be there. And I have my whiskey. Let me show you guys what I got. This was a gift from my CTO. It's a Gordon McFall, 1983. It was put in the bottle in 2019. So people ask me what whiskey we have to celebrate. Uh, I have that. I'm not going to be driving. Someone else is going to be driving me. <laughs> and I know a lot of you other guys are going to do that. It'll be a great moment, a great event. And then next day, it'll be business as usual for us. And Monday, as we move our way towards having that done. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you all for listening. I have to go to a lunch meeting now. I will see you guys soon. Check out the Cardano 360 episode in on Thursday and uh, smooth sailing, smooth water ahead.